Hey everybody, Jay Super Awesome here. I'd like to welcome you all to week number 45 of the Horror Man Slashback Saturday Challenge. This week's slasher movie theme is Shovember Slashers. So shot on video slashers. And I will be giving my review for Anthropophagus 2000. Okay, so getting into the plot for this one. Nikos and his family are trapped during a heavy story in a boat. And I think that's supposed to say they're trapped during a heavy storm in a boat, but it says story. Anyway, leading to the unfortunate death of their daughter, Vicky, Nikos becomes mad with the desire to survive, and he begins to kill and eat his own wife. Nikos manages to reach the shore of a small island, but his appetite for human flesh has consumed him. A group of young people on vacation have an unfortunate meeting with Nico. Will these youngsters make it out alive? Okay, so getting into my thoughts for this one. With this week's slasher movie theme of shot on video slashers, I chose to watch and review Anthropophagus 2000 because I really loved the original Anthropophagus and I had never watched Anthropophagus 2000. And I have to say that I really enjoyed this movie. I don't know that I can necessarily say that it's a good movie because it's pretty bad, but by shot on video standards, I thought it was a blast. Anthropophagus 2000 is a remake that was dedicated to the original movie's director, Joe D'Amato, who passed away in 1999, and I thought he was a great filmmaker. The basic overall storyline is the same as the original. We have a group of friends who visit a island on vacation, and upon their arrival, realize the village has been deserted. Of course, we do find out why. One thing that I can say about this part of the storyline is that in the original movie, the characters arrive on the island by boat and become stranded on the island when their boat drifts away. Now, I'm not going to assume that everybody has seen the original, so I will at least say there's a reason the boat drifts away, and I will leave it at that. So, in the original, there was a strong sense of dread because the characters are stranded and are in a really bad situation. In this movie, the characters arrive in a van and have car trouble and are stranded that way. So I didn't really feel like being stranded with car trouble was as severe as losing your boat. I guess what I'm trying to say is that I feel like the characters who were stranded with car trouble still had a better chance of getting away. Anyway, we also have the same backstory for the killer. Nikos and his pregnant wife and daughter take a boat trip that goes horribly wrong and it leaves them stranded at sea. A bad storm has damaged their boat and caused a fatal injury to their daughter. Nikos suggests to his wife that they should eat their daughter so they can survive. Of course, she's not okay with this idea, so Nikos kills her and now has plenty of food to last him until he can make it back to the island. Upon arriving back at the island, he has become badly burned from the salt water and the hot sun and now has a strong appetite for human flesh. Overall, I really enjoyed Anthropophagus 2000. It doesn't come close to the original for me, but for this one being shot on video, I thought it looked pretty good, and I did want to mention that this release from Massacre Video was subtitles only. Okay, so now I'm going to talk about the cast of characters we have in Anthropophagus 2000. And there's not really much I can say about the characters in this movie. We have a group of friends who are taking a vacation trip to an island. This movie has little to no character development. I guess I could say that we have one guy who likes to strum around on a guitar, and we have a pregnant woman. There's not really a lot of details behind these characters that is going to connect you to any of them. This movie is all about the body count and the kills. The group who are on their way to the island are going to meet up with a couple of friends who, unfortunately for them, have arrived early. Now, it seems like they're having a decent enough time, but it will be short-lived because they are just here to add to the movie's overall body count and basically just to get the ball rolling. One side character that I wanted to briefly mention was while the group was traveling in their van, they were stopped by a pretty rough looking homeless guy who was begging for food. The pregnant lady is sick from the drive, so she gets out of the van to throw up. The homeless guy holds out his hand to collect it for food. Yeah, that's just gross. So 
Overall, even though there was nothing really special about these characters in this movie, I thought the acting was good enough for a low-budget slasher film. Okay, so now I'm going to talk about the most important part of a slasher movie, that is the killer and the kills. I absolutely love the look and the setup for the killer in this movie, and in both films. I thought they did an amazing job of recreating the look of Nikos, also known as the Grim Reaper. Getting that right was so important for this film, and I have to say that they nailed it. The killer looks awesome. I don't really feel like he is as intimidating or as scary as the original, but still very effective overall. I do really like the killer's backstory, and they went into a little more detail on this one. And I will say Nikos, before he is burnt by the seawater in the sun, doesn't really look like the same dude playing as the flesh eater. Now, if it actually is, then that's a credit to them and what they were able to do with the makeup effects for the killer. As far as the kills go in this movie, it has a really high body count with some absolutely brutal kills. We have a violent hatchet kill where a woman is being chopped up, she gets part of her face ripped off before finally taking the final hatchet blow to the face. One guy gets a spear through the back of the neck, another guy gets his face smashed in by a rock, and then gets his intestines pulled out. And speaking of intestines being pulled out, another guy gets his arm broken in half, and then a hand shoved down his throat, and his intestines are pulled from his mouth. And we have some extremely savage baby munching. The kills are extremely gory and over the top, and actually pretty fake looking considering they are dummy kills, but so much fun to watch, and is the highlight of this movie. Overall, I really enjoyed Anthropophagus 2000. I'm going to recommend it if you are a fan of low-budget slasher movies, or if you are a fan of the original. I'm going to give Anthropophagus 2000 a 6 out of 10, so please like, subscribe, comment below, let me know if you have seen Anthropophagus 2000, or just let me know what you think about my review, and as always, I would like to thank you all for watching.